During summer 2013, University of Oregon scientists conducted critical earthquake research for a four-year, $30 million project funded by the National Science Foundation and the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. They retrieved ocean bottom seismometers that had been measuring vibrations of the ocean floor off the coast of Oregon and California. This project, called the Cascadia Initiative, will provide an assessment of earthquake risk to the Pacific Northwest. It's led in part by University of Oregon geophysicist Doug Toomey. Everyone knows the Pacific Northwest extends from British Columbia uh, effectively down to Northern California. And we live uh, on the edge of where North America is overriding the Juan de Fuca Plate. And the Juan de Fuca Plate is located roughly here. What's uh, really you know, fundamentally different about this experiment is that we have both seismometers onshore and across the beach in shallow water to the deep ocean. So uh, there are hundreds of onshore seismometers and when we're done there will be hundreds of offshore ocean bottom seismometers that have recorded. It is telling us something about the basic way in which the system operates. And it'll tell us about how it's uh, locked along uh, the coastal areas and what that means in particular is the width of the lock zone that generates large earthquakes and tsunamis varies through all subduction zones. And the wider that lock zone is, the further it comes on shore. The narrower that lock zone is, the less it comes on shore. And that affects the geologic hazards for the people that are living there. The Atlantis trip was led by UO geophysicist Dean Lively Brooks and Ann Trehu, a professor in the College of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences at Oregon State University. They oversaw a research team that recovered 30 ocean bottom seismometers with the help of Jason a remotely operated vehicle the size of a small car that connected floats to the instruments so they could be lifted on board. They're deploying the Jason uh, ROV, remotely operated vehicle, a little robot that goes down to the sea floor and sends up images of what it sees. This is a critical window because um, we're racing against the weather. For these instruments, they're big and heavy and um, pretty dangerous to bring on board. And um, as the weather gets rougher, it gets more and more difficult. This footage shot from Jason shows an elevator, roughly the size of a refrigerator, which is dropped by the ship near the seismometer to help retrieve it. Responding to commands given by an operator on Atlantis, the manipulator arms on Jason remove ties on the elevator. Then, it grabs a shackle and chain and moves to the ocean bottom seismometer. It can be seen here. It's under a shield called a trawl resistant mount which protects the instrument from fishing operations in the area. The operator uses Jason's manipulator arms to screw a bolt and shackle onto the device so it can be lifted onto the ship. The trawl resistant mounts used in the Cascadia initiative enable scientists to measure earthquake activity in shallow water. Historically, ocean bottom seismometers placed in shallow water have been dredged up by fishermen. However, it's no simple task to use Jason to fasten a shackle and bolt to these mounts. ROV operators say it's like threading a needle with boxing gloves on. So we just uh, fished aboard a uh, ocean bottom size bobber. You can see it down there. This is the start of a busy period for us. We're going to be fishing these off the floor, the ocean floor, every couple hours for a while now. The research team endured unusually rough weather, including winds of 50 miles per hour and 12-foot swells. Some of the seismometers were equipped with pop-up buoys that hurtle to the surface when signaled by the ship, marking the location of the seismometer. In this example described by Lively Brooks, operators used the manipulator arms of the ROV to delicately trigger a release, freeing the pop-up buoy. Well, he's, he's just quite expert with the, you know, the actuator arm and he just reached in and essentially grabbed 
the end of the buoy and essentially wiggle it, you know, and it came shooting out. Lively Brooks is part of a national effort to increase interest in science and technology careers among students in K through 12 and community colleges. He found space on the research ship for community college students Haley Domer and Jonas Cervantes. Lively Brooks said there are many students who have never seen scientists at work and don't have a good understanding of what they do from day to day. So out here they're witnessing lots of scientists and engineers with specialized jobs in action and working as a team. They'll be able to go back to their home institutions and say to you know, their friends, oh, I know, you know, this is what we did when we were out in the Atlantis, I can tell you these stories. And, and my hope is that that serves to then inspire those other students, their peers, to also consider careers as scientists and engineers. The underwater cameras on Jason also provided the research team with wonderful shots of marine life, including fish. This is a lingcod. and even a passing shark. The crew also enjoyed the antics of a group of Pacific white-sided dolphins that raced Atlantis briefly one day. Well, we're just coming home and we've had a successful mission. We've recovered 30 ocean bottom seismometers the opportunity to go out and actually see the bottom of the ocean from a ship, you know, maybe 3,000 meters below you was, was really great for me. We live on a, a major subduction zone that generates large tsunamogenic earthquakes. It's infrequent, the last one was 313 years ago, but it will happen in the future. And mitigating that uh, eventual occurrence requires that we be uh, persistent in how we study the system. 